All right. Wonderful. Awesome. All right. Good morning, team, and happy Friday. Can you believe it? It's already July 15, halfway through the month of July. I just remember uh, blowing up some uh, fireworks on 4th of July, and now we're in the halfway point of July. So um, I want to start off with uh, thanking each and every one of you for jumping on the call. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. But more so, I'm very excited to uh, introduce you to our guest uh, speaker, Mr. <laughs> Uh, Derek Hirano. Derek is a, uh, a phenomenal, humble, humble uh, professional, has been in the industry for just a bit and has done an amazing uh, job in his, um, in, his, in his career. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Derek Hirano. My man, Derek, how are you, sir? Good. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. Again, thanks again for jumping on an early uh, Friday morning. So let's get right into it. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Derek. Sure. So um, I, uh, I saw the announcement that got sent out and uh, I realized <laughs> I need to update my bio. I don't think I've updated my bio since like- That wasn't five, me, by the way. That was- Four uh, or five of years ago. Um, and I was like, man, this thing is really old. Um, but uh, hi, I'm Derek Hirano. Uh, I have been uh, in the industry for, I think, uh, this is my eighth year, going on my eighth year right now. Um, uh, knock on wood, just the toot the own horn. Um, we got ranked uh, last, for 2021, we're ranked in the top 1.5% of real trends. Um, so, you know, typically that year we did about 35 transactions, about 35 million in volume. Um, and... Yeah, uh, born and raised in Torrance, uh, went to West High School, um, went to, you lived in uh, Orange County for a little while when I went to school and then worked out there full-time afterwards and then moved back to start real estate full-time. Wonderful, Derek. So how did you start in real estate? Why real estate? <clears throat> uh, I really, well, kind of started with what I didn't like. Um, I really didn't like the job that I was doing before. So like after I, I went to college at UC Irvine um, with the intention of being a lawyer. So like, yeah, I studied political science, interned at a law firm in college and realized like I just, it wasn't for me. Um, so I just took kind of like any old job. Um, so I used, I used to do a work for a background screening company. So when you get like hired by or Apple or at t or something, they'll run a background screen on you. That's what my company used to do. Um, and I used to do like profit and, uh, sorry, pricing and profitability for it, um, which is like, you know, figuring out, you know, what we do, like, you know, what services they want, how much to charge, how much we're gonna make, you know, report it back to the sales and accounting team. Um, really like just desk job kind of work. Um, and that just, I, I, you know, I did it for four or five years and just realized that's really just not for me who I am. So I kind of actively went out looking for something else. Um, I've always been interested in homes and real estate, you know, just probably like a lot of people out there. Like I like, like, you know, those million dollar listing shows or HGTV um, or whenever I would go on vacation too, I'd look up like, you know, oh, like how much the homes are over here, uh, things like that. So uh, I did it actually very intentionally. Uh, I before I got into this business, I did a lot of research on kind of what it takes to be successful in real estate, interviewed. Um, I, I don't have any family in real estate or anything like that. So I reached out to people like my parents knew, asked them, you know, bought them lunch and asked them, hey, look, can I pick your brain for, you know, an hour um, about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? And I felt that, you know, they <clears throat> they took the time to speak with me. As, as more I learned about the business, I thought this is something I could do. Um, so then, you know, 2015, I said, okay, well, I'm just going to jump into it and go full steam ahead. Love that. <clears throat> How was your first year in real estate? Hectic. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever worked so hard in my life. <laughs> um, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's the, I think the saying like drinking from a fire hose, you know, there's so much that gets thrown at you. Um, but it, it's, but it was also great. Like uh, I always wanted to be in a career that is entrepreneurial, that you have a little more control over your own destiny. Um, and I always liked the idea that, you know, knock on wood, like how hard I would work would translate to, you know, ideally how, how successful I am. Um, so although it was a lot of work, like I loved it a lot. Yeah, it's usually the case. Your first year is 
obstacles, challenges, walls that you'll hit, frustration, right? <clears throat> yeah. All of the above. <clears throat> so tell me a little bit on your second year, how did that transition and were you starting to build momentum or did it take you a while to really start really seeing the results of where you're at now? Uh, it's It's been a slow, uh, well, you know, it's been a, every year has been a little more than the last year. Um, so the first year, I think we did, I think, or I think I did like six deals, something like that. Um, I think the next year was like 10 or 12. Um, it's, you know, I, I, the area that I'm working, which is the South Bay, um, you know, luckily I grew up here. So I do know people that gives me kind of like a little bit of a head start, um, as far as just having like a steer that is active in the area that I'm working. Um, but it was a lot of just trying to get your name out there the first year. That's what I remember a lot of, you know, what I was doing, just telling as many people as I can, Hey, look, I'm a real estate agent. If you're looking at you, your mom, your aunt, your uncle, your grandpa, like wants to like buy or sell a house, like, you know, I'm here. Um, and that was a lot of what the first year was. Um, and then luckily that kind of, you know, has snowballed into what it is today. So what you're telling me, you did a lot of asking, right? Asking for mm -hmm. business, right? And that's something that I preach all the time, Derek, with everyone is, you know, you got to go out and ask for business. You know, no one knows that you're in real estate, right? Until you start introducing yourself and letting them know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in real estate. What can I do to help you? That's awesome. <clears throat> so a lot of I, it was, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, like, a lot of it wasn't, um, a lot of it didn't end up being like, you know, hey, like, you know, buddy from, you know, high school, like, I'm an agent, you know, like, call me. A lot of it just became like, hey, like, I'm just back in town, man, I want to catch up. And you kind of inev inevitably get to like, well, what are you doing now? Um, so uh, I, I never went in with the I, you know, not gonna lie, I try not to go into the, with the intention of um, solicit business, but, you know, when you talk to people that, you know, care about you, um, then, you know, that, that topic just normally comes up. Um, and so I would never kind of hammer it in this, that that's just kind of who I am too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Any challenges that you uh, faced your first couple of years? And if you did have challenges, you know, what were those challenges? Um, I think for, for challenges, it's, I'm a person that really wants to, um, kind of like know everything before you, before you start. Um, like you want, like, uh, I'm the guy like, doesn't like sometimes doesn't want to like try something new. Cause I know I'm not going to be good at it right away. Like, I don't want to have to like build up that time where, um, yeah, I just want to I'm instant gratification. Like I want to just start and be good. Um, so I think that was like my own biggest challenge for me personally is just knowing that, you know, trying to try to pitch myself, knowing that, you know, I might not know everything. Um, and on the flip side of that, the challenge was also trying to learn as much as I can, as fast as I could. Um, you know, I, you know, when you, just like, you know, like everyone knows a real estate agent, you know, you talk to anyone and they're going to give you three names of people they know, the guy that knocks on their door every month, you know, the guy that mails the, the gal that mails them, um, you know, the person that, you know, your mom's best friend, right? There's always somebody. Um, so I always try to compete with that by trying to know, like have as much information as possible. And so um, my challenge was really trying to get that knowledge and digest it and figure out what I really needed to know out of all this stuff to really improve on my business every day. Yeah, I love that. Uh, something that you said resonated is, and it's so true to this day. I know it because I feel it every time you come into my office, you know, you're, you're a forward thinker, in my opinion, meaning that you're very cautious at everything. You're very calculated at everything, which is a great trait to have you know, especially in what we do, because that'll set you to succeed, but ultimately find that avenue of solution, right? Because in real estate, as you know, Derek, in doing so many, so many transactions year after year, uh, the importance is none, none or all are going to be smooth transactions, right? We hope that our transactions are as smooth as possible, but there's going to be hiccups. There's going to be walls that you hit, Knowing how to proactively 
think how to navigate that to ultimately finish, right? And close the deal for your clients is uh, something that is, it, it's a skill set. Um, and it's something that you build as you're, as you're progressing in your career. The more transactions, the better you get at it. <clears throat> Trust right. me when I say this, I am one that has seen numerous of transactions, but every time it's something that I think, and I, I can use that avenue to say, well, this is what happened in this particular transaction. It may not go in that direction, but on my guess, it may go in that direction, right. right? The more you do, the better you get at understanding the process and uh, eliminating, you know, the frustration for your clients because your clients should, should feel that wonderful <laughs> experience, right, of buying or selling their home or an investment. We take the blunt of the strain and all the chaos that the transaction and you, Derek, are very, very good at doing that. One, you're very calm in nature, <clears throat> your demeanor, but more so your professionalism and because you know. So that definitely helps you navigate, you know, the conversations. You know, I'm a true believer to that too, is lack of communication will ultimately kill the deal. Over yeah. communication will help you understand all sides, but more so to finish and, and get to the end, which is closing the transaction. So, yeah, I think in the beginning too, like uh, when I was starting out, I really, one of the things that I think really helped me is like, I sought out as many, like as many people as I could that I thought would be able to expertly explain whatever the process was right so like you know whether that's like my title rep or my escrow officer or my manager or you know whoever that person was like you know I would very I, I would I would ask them tons of questions and to this day I ask them tons of questions um, when I get random deals um, that it, you know because like you said you go through so many deals you, you realize that you, you'll never know everything but what I found out very early on is like, you know, if I don't have the answer, that's okay. But I need to be able to have people that I can pick up the phone and call to be able to find that answer for my clients. Um, and for the most part, like as long as you tell, <clears throat> and, I mean, no client has ever been upset at me by me saying, look, I don't know the answer right now, but I'm going to go find, figure it out and get back to you ASAP. Um, and, you know, that's always worked out for me. That's what I still do to this day. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very valid point. Yeah. When you don't know, a lot of agents, unfortunately, try to, try to wing it, right? <clears throat> but that ultimately may get you in a situation down the line. It's better to be brutally honest, right? And say, look, that's a very good, good question. I do not know the answer, but I have the resources, right, mm -hmm. to um, get that answer for you. Give me winging you know, it gets you in trouble. <laughs> it got me in trouble, you know, just say, oh yeah, it's probably this, you know, and then, you know, next week you figure out, oh, actually, no, it wasn't that you really shouldn't have done that. Now I have to go back and tell them, you know, Derek's an idiot. I shouldn't have done this. I should do this. Um, so I always I figured out, yeah, just, you know, just try to figure out the right answer going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go back to uh, 2020, Derek. Uh, just before a pandemic, tell us what you uh, ultimately uh, did during you know that particular shift in our in our industry. So, um, 2020 uh, ended up being uh, actually I think before last year. Uh, you know, like I said, every year has been been better and better. Um, 2020 was the best year that I had to date um, at the time. Um, I, like I said, I'm a forward thinker. So when shutdown happened, um, on the business end of things, uh, I cut cost, um, as everywhere I could. So I, you know, Simon knows this, I scrapped the office that I had in the, in the office because that was rent that I was not going to use, um, transition to work from home full time, um, pulled out a lot of the different marketing things that I was doing and different extra expenses that I thought, um, I could go without and try to transition my business to, you know, online. Um, and, you know, my sources of 
uh, leads a lot of times are, you know, sphere is always a big one for me and it still continues to be, it's my biggest one. So you know, people, you know, people that they know, you know, referrals, that kind of thing. Um, those, you know, knock on wood have stayed tried and true throughout everything, pandemic included. Um, but open houses were a big one. Um, and that also, that suffered a lot. You know, we didn't have open houses for a long time. I used to pull in at least a couple deals a year from open houses and then, um, that kind of went away. So uh, I had already kind of been transitioning to um, getting business online, but I never really liked, uh, again, this is, don't knock anything to you, try it. This is just my own personal story, but um, I never really liked like online leads as much as far as like the paid ones that you'd get from Zillow. Um, Cause I tried, I, I tried everything. So I tried Zillow before those kind of things where, um, you'd get kind of sent the, the online leads and they just take so much work, um, con continuous follow-up. Uh, and they do have a good conversion rate if you can go through it, but it just takes a lot of effort and time. But I always knew that reviews were really important. Um, when I first started in the business, the one thing that um, I can't remember who told me, but you know, they told me that reviews are, you know, obviously online reviews are important. Um, so I always tried to get reviews. And then when pandemic hit, I kind of doubled down. Um, is trying to get reviews. So, you know, knock on wood, we have like, I think it's close to about 60 um, Yelp reviews, um, which is pretty big for a real estate. Uh, if you look at like, you know, Torrance and real estate, that's pretty big for a Torrance person. Um, you know, the highest people have about a hundred. Uh, so we're usually, you know, top first page, something like that. Um, I've transitioned to Google reviews too. Um, I have like a bunch of Zillow ones, but I kind of moved away from that. Uh, Cause I don't really see too many people actually calling on my Zillow views, but Yelp and Google I do. So um, that transition to online when people could not go out and people had to go look for agents online um, was a big help for our business as well. Love that. <clears throat> uh, you said something <clears throat> that uh, hit the core for me again is <clears throat> the reviews, right? Are you asking people after a close of close a deal are you asking for reviews? How does every single time? Okay, so tell us yeah. a little bit of how, how <laughs> that approach is, because this is good information if you really want to anchor down opportunities through <clears throat> um, you know uh, platforms such as Zillow and um, you know the presence of online. Yeah, so um, I ask for it every time. Like you know, if I think and, and knock on wood, most of them have been very you know smooth sales and everything like that. We try very hard upfront to ensure that our clients have a very good process when right. they you know, buy a home and they sell a home. Um, so you know, most of those transactions are pretty smooth. Even the ones that are not that smooth too will still ask. But um, I emphasize uh, usually in my buyer presentation, in my listing presentation, like, you know, hey, look, we have lots of nice online reviews. Um, you know, haha, if we like do a great job for you, We'd love for you to be one too, like jokingly, but I'm putting that out in the very beginning, um, you know, and then throughout the transaction, you know, I'll bring it up usually at least maybe once, you know, where it's like, you know, they're like, oh my God, this is going so great. You know, like, like that's awesome. Like when we close, like, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a good online review. That's a big part of our business. It helps people find us. Um, so if we, if we do a good job for you, you know, I, as we're in the middle of this transaction, we would love a good review. And then at the end, after we close and we give them the keys or, you know, we give them the check, whatever it is, um, I always have a templated email I send out that says, here's my review pages. Um, please, if you don't mind, remember when I mentioned leave a review, like, could you leave a review? Um, and if they don't, sometimes I'll follow up again on that same email and be like, hey, like, you know, it's been a month. Hope you like love your new house, you know? but it's in the same email where I asked for the review. So, um, you know, hint, hint. Uh, and, I, and, you know, if they're not going to do it, they're not going to do it. But I, I, I push for it because um, sure. I found that, you know, everyone is busy. Our clients are busy. We're busy. People just forget. Uh, and that's not, you know, not because they don't want to, they just forget. Um, or they get, you know, they, if they really don't want to do it, I'm not going to force them. But um, if they are willing, uh, I'm going to make sure at least that they, I, I try to get them to do it because, um, they are a huge part of our business, at least. Yeah, no, so true. Yeah, and, and, and the funny thing too, Derek, is there, there's a lot of agents that don't capitalize on that and the importance of those reviews. 
because more so now than ever, everyone is online researching you, right? Mm -hmm. What are the activities? What are you doing? <clears throat> yeah. And if you don't have any type of social media presence or even a website created, you know, they may go with someone that is heavily promoting themselves on online, right? Yeah. So, and that's one of the key elements to, you know, small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Why not do the same thing? And I like how you, you said you do the follow-up. Hey, just wanted to check in. How's the home? And it gives them an opportunity to, oh, by the way, shoot, I forgot to uh, give uh, Derek a review. Let me go ahead and do that. And it can be as a simple conversation that has nothing to do with asking for the review, but it's, you know, the consistency, right, of doing your follow-up, which we always talk about all the time to our agents is, you know, the activities and then the follow-up, which a lot of agents, unfortunately, fall short on their follow-up. So tell us a little bit about <clears throat> how that looks for you in your follow-up. Because <clears throat> to oh. do, you know, 20 plus, 30 plus transaction, you must have a well-oiled um, uh, system in place that helps you with the follow-up to get so much uh, opportunities and close so many deals. So I, I think I, well, I, I feel like I can always be better um, at sure. the follow-up. Um, and I think that's, you know, uh, I'm always looking to improve. And I think that's probably where like my, uh, what's it called? That's my like greatest weakness is my follow-up um, right now. So I normally have like, uh, I use a, a CRM just like everyone else to kind of like set reminders for myself too. Um, but I think that's where, you know, I just have to continue to remind myself that, hey, look, you know, I have set reminders in it to follow up with people. Um, I also use a task management software as well um, called like Asana to make sure that, hey, look, if I'm supposed to um, send something to this person or send a thank you gift to this person, I do it in there too. Um, so I have two different systems I kind of use to, to follow up. Um, but, you know, I try to make important dates in there, you know, home anniversaries, things like that. If I told them when their birthday was, shoot them a text on their birthday, you know, happy birthday. Um, otherwise, like I do have like a systematic follow-up where, you know, if someone, a lead comes in, I'll either follow up with them two, three times. And then, um, you should probably do it. Like just to everyone listening, they tell you to do it like seven or eight times. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't really do all that sometimes, but, um, uh, that's how many times you're supposed to do it. And then, uh, but then I'll put them on a drip campaign and I'll continue to like kind of reach out to them from time, from time to time. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, that's the uh, case for a lot of uh, agents. You know, we can, we, can, we can be good at the activities, right? Prospecting, door knocking, um, over the phone, uh, hitting expires or sale by owners, doing open house. And you get all these leads, right? Yeah. And you get all these leads and all these numbers and emails. And now the uh, crunch time is the follow-up. And it's not <clears throat> that you won't do the first layer of follow-up, right? You'll pick up the phone, you know, go over 20 uh, leads that you came. It's going back and hitting those consistent, uh, consistently, as you uh, stated, you know, five yeah. to eight times in order for you to know exactly, are they in or are they not in? Are they willing to buy something or are they willing to sell something? And that's where we fall short because agents' mindset is one or two times. And that's it. And then they'll forget the work on new opportunities. But the core is, is again, as you said, it's the follow up and the staying on track and consistent because the more you do until they tell you no, right? Eric, I am not interested in buying, I'm not interested in selling, and you stop. <clears throat> this is why you have a system in place to help you as well. And that's, uh, that's one of our, you know, every year I try to do like a, a business plan with certain goals that I want to hit. Um, and that was 2022 is that's one of them uh, is one of my big three goals is, is to get better at the follow-up because I know um, that, you know, follow-up num attempt number five, six, seven is really when you get to the nitty gritty. You know, when they'll pick up the right. phone, they'll either tell you, stop calling me, stop bugging me. I would say, hey, look, you know, I'm actually looking to buy a house because I've gone, you know, the, you know, the, the person in me is always trying to figure out more information. I've gone back 
looked up people's names on real lists just to see if they actually bought a house. And I see sometimes that, hey, look, they bought a house in 2021. Um, I should have been that agent. Now is not because why? Because I dropped the ball. Um, so there is a, I know my business could be even better if I, if I implement that part. Um, and I don't want to, you know, cause lead, getting the lead is hard. Converting the lead is, is even harder. And I want to be able to be better at, at that part. Of that. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> so let's talk about now with what we're seeing right now with the uh, interest rate. Is that, is that, uh, changing your perspective now as we, uh, as we approach the end of the year, what are you doing right now to uh, navigate this new shift? I think, you know, what we've seen on our, uh, for our sellers is that there is a concern, you know, that we were telling them, look, the market is shifting. And I think that's undeniable. You read any headline, um, you know, of any major newspaper, they're gonna have a real estate thing where they're talk talking to you about the market's changing. Um, so they're aware of that too. Our clients are educated as well. So we're just coaching them through saying, hey, look, you know, this is a this is a period of time when everyone is trying to figure out what's going to happen next, right? But um, there are still motivated buyers out there. You know, we just have to up our marketing, up our, you know, be really strategic in who we're trying to target to be able to get here to buy your house. On the buyer side, uh, you know, what I tell them is honestly what I think. Like, uh, I kind of think there's this like, window of opportunity right now when everyone's kind of freaking out about everything um that when if you are able to snag something right now you're going to get you might get a little bit of a deal when people are kind of pulling the panic button i think six months from now when this higher rate environment becomes a new normal um it's just going to go back to normal you know i think there'll be less buyers out there um you know and i think we're already seeing that now you know there's no longer Rarely are there 10 offers on the property. There's, you know, three to five. Um, but I think as this progresses, you know, I'm telling buyers, look, if you find a house you like, inventory is picking up, but it's still tight. So if you find a house you like, you know, go for it. And then, you know, a year from now, two years from now, if rates fall, you can always refinance. But look, you're, already, you're gonna lock in your rate now. You know, you're gonna build equity starting now. Um, uh, many people are still protecting, um, that uh, home value appreciation is slowing, but still but still going up. It's not gonna protect it to go down. So you're still gonna have opportunity to build wealth. And there is also a, not only a financial aspect, but there is, you know, if you're bleeding money on rent, that's one thing, but there's also a, um, there's also a, a inherent value of, of owning your own home. Um, that is sometimes not monetary. It's not money. So, um, that's kind of what we talk about, yeah. Well, and it's it's great you say that, Derek, because it's how you uh, portray the narrative, right? And how you uh, paint the uh, story. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said. You know, is um, building building you know appreciation, building wealth, and the opportunity that it's not really the money aspect of it. It's you know the memories that you'll have, and if you know how to portray that and tell the story. The buyers are more uh, compelled to um, pull the trigger and buy something. And I think too, but yeah, just in general for my business, like I very much view it as a service-based business. Like I, I, I don't really care when you buy. Like I just want, like you know, uh, my goal is to kind of give you my opinion, tell you what I think of the market. If there's an opportunity, then I'm going to tell you I think this is opportunity. But if you don't want to buy right now, like that's cool. You don't have to buy right now. I just want to be the guy that you go to when you buy. Um, and so that's how I've had clients that, you know, I met when I first started starting to close now, you know, or like, you know, people who I met in open house four years ago that, you know, this is, this has happened. Like one of the last deals we closed is an open house person I met four years ago, followed up a couple of times, put them on a drip campaign. And then they randomly called me and said, Hey, look, you know, we had a really good impression, you know, we see, you said, if you never need anything, call me. Like, I want to sell this, this condo that I bought. So they didn't use me to, to buy it, which I'm upset about, but they used me to sell it, which is great. Um, so that's kind of how I approach my business and all this stuff. It's just a service-based one. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. Well, Derek, um, I'm going to open it up to anyone that has any questions for uh, Derek. This is the opportunity to do so. So, um, yeah, it's open mic. 
All right. What do we have here? Is that from Kim? Do you utilize an administrator assistant or a BA? Good question. Great question. Um, I My goal is to hire, I thought, I'll talk to Simon about this. My goal is to hire an assistant this year, but right now, no. I do all, I've learned to do all the admin stuff myself. Well, and you do have a, a member as part of oh, that. Oh, I do have a team member though. Yeah, I do have a buyer's agent. I did have an assistant for a while, um, but, uh, well, it was my wife. We worked together for a little while, um, but it was uh, it was just hard to tell her what to do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and say, this is the exact way I want it. Yeah, I don't really yeah. care what, you, what, what your opinion is. I just want you to do it this way. And then, but sometimes it doesn't always go well. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we decided that's probably not the best story. Trend. Love it. Uh, Rachel says, love your positivity and magnetic personality. Congrats on your continued success. Thank you. Cool. Anyone else? <clears throat> what is your daily work schedule look like? That's a good um, question. It's a real estate schedule, man. It's, it's all over the place. Um, but I will say in general, like I told this assignment too, I'm not a morning person. That's just not, that's just not who I am. I've kind of embraced it. Um, so I'm more of like a nine to nine person. So like, you know, I'll, I'll start working around nine, but I will go to nine, nine thirty at night working. Um, Cause that's kind of how my schedule is. Um, ideally, you know, we're, we're trying to get a lot of the admin and follow up done in the morning. So that way the afternoon is free to take appointments when people want to meet um, to go on showings, things like that. Like, you know, today we're doing this. Uh, I got a phone call at 11 with the potential new buyer. We have, meeting a plumber uh, for an escrow um, at three and then a dinner with an old client at five. So that's kind of just kind of what the, the schedule kind of looks like random, just, you know, appointments as many as I can stack into a day is always great. Um, Cause that's where we are, we're making the money is being in front of the other people. Um, but in, in between, which is usually the morning, which is kind of the slower time is to get all the other kind of uh, transactional stuff done, things like that. Yeah, so awesome, beautiful. Well, Derek, thank you. I really yeah. appreciate your time. Like I said, it's already 8.30. Told you it, it goes by fast. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again. Really, it, it was an honor to have you on the uh, Producers Mindset. And thank you all. Really appreciate it. So Derek, enjoy yourself. Much success to you. Continue doing what you're doing. And um, you know, we'll see you all on our next uh, Producers Mindset. Cool. Have a wonderful you, day and a wonderful weekend. Thanks again, Derek. Bye.